I'm one of your hosts, Carly Reese. And I'm Joe Rando. And if you are listening to this podcast or watching this podcast today, chances are you like podcasts, but have you ever considered it for your own business? That is exactly what we are talking today with none other than two-time guest, George B. Thomas. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Two times. I get the yeah. blue ribbon. <laughs> George, for those of you who don't know, has made quite a name for himself in the marketing world, especially when it comes to HubSpot. Um, and he is also quite the podcaster himself. He has Hub Heroes, Sidekick Strategies, Marketing Smarts, Beyond Your Default. All of those are podcasts that you should subscribe to. And now we get him today. He is the best person to talk to on the topic. And honestly, he's just one of the best people you can ever meet. So, George, oh. welcome to the show. We are so happy to have you here today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Carly and Joe, I'm super excited to be here. Um, I'm, I hope over the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 minutes, our, our conversation that the solopreneurs that are listening to this are going to be able to either go from what they aren't doing to doing something or doing what they're doing to something better. That is that is my whole goal for the time that we spend here as we have this conversation. A noble goal. Yes, we will share that with you. And George, I mean, I, I feel like there, I mean, there are so many podcasters that we could talk to in the podcast for business, but we really wanted you on the show because you have such a unique take on it, I think. And for you, it starts with the brand, and that is the core of it, and that's why I love your take. So can you walk our audience through like the role that having a brand plays in business podcasting specifically? Yeah, and I think there's, there's even a foundational point that I want people to put in their brain as I go forward to answer this, is that we are having uh, a dramatic conversation in one direction. We're not having a podcasting conversation. We're having a podcasting for business conversation. They are two entirely different things. And you would pull different tactics and strategies based on you're doing it for business or you're doing it as a passion project. I do not do the same things in Beyond Your Default as I do in Hub Heroes and things like that. So with that understanding that we're talking about business podcasting, I think for solopreneurs, this conversation comes down to twofold, two things that they should be paying attention to. One is a podcast is going to be one of the things that will expedite brand growth or building a brand. You can go from a whatever you are about in your solopreneur business, zero, to whatever you want to become, hero, around those topics because you are creating valuable content that people can listen to or watch if it's video or audio based. Hopefully you're starting with video, then going to audio. Anyway, we'll probably talk about that down the road. But being able to get yourself out into the world and start to build the brand around the things that you want to be known for, one, podcasting is the easiest way to start. And what I mean by that is it's not the old school where you had to have like this account, that account, some aluminum foil and like hold your leg up in the air and like, yep, we got a podcast. That, that What's an RSS feed? I don't know, but we're live. Like those days are gone. You can literally go over to transistor.fm. It's one of my favorite podcasts, like audio hosting companies. I'm not affiliated. I don't get no money for saying this, but it's one of the easiest to just get a podcast up, get it live, get it out and share it with all the places like Amazon, Spotify, Apple, like there's one button pushes that you can just get your show to seven, eight, ten different locations because you have to be thinking like everybody has their own favorite podcast app. So we need to make sure we're on everybody's favorite podcast app. But it's easy to start. And the other thing is it is very easy to add value. You can have an outline. You can even have a script, but please don't sound like you're reading a script. But you can you can literally, if you decide not to do video, nobody has to see your face. Nobody has to see your background. They just get to hear the words out of your mouth. And so you can start easy. You can start to add value, meaning content into the world. And the biggest thing and the difference of podcasting versus business podcasting is it's an easy way that you can start building a list. And when I say building a list is that all these kind of solopreneurs are out there and they're like, I got to be on Facebook. I got to be on LinkedIn. I got to be on Instagram. I got to be on. T I'm getting tired just listing out the platforms, let alone actually interacting with them. Create your own platform that people want to come to. And that's your podcast. 
but make sure they can subscribe to the show notes. Make sure they have a, a form somewhere that they can tell you this is the type of show or the next topic I'd like you to cover. Like, well, again, we'll we'll dive into this a little bit more, but what I'm talking about, is it's the easiest way to build a community. When you're building a community by adding value, you're building trust, you're building reciprocity, and therefore the sales process becomes really, really easy. That's one fold, by the way. Second fold, second thing that I want to talk about is extending the brand. Okay, you've taken the time, you've built that brand, but now you can use the podcast or another podcast because you're so comfortable with doing it to serve the community over time at maybe a deeper level or a different level. Um, you can start in your podcast to offer products and services. But what I want everybody to hear is I'm not saying start a podcast and start selling, 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 pitching, 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 selling. Start a podcast, add value to the world. And if you use the subtle sell, hey, we happen to do a workshop on that. Mm, what? A tease, a bug in the ear. Let their brain actually discover the fact that over two, 10 or 20 episodes, you know what, they ain't got it. I've heard about that workshop enough. I want to get the workshop. Now, all of a sudden, you're selling a workshop, and you didn't even sell a workshop. Your podcast did because you slightly mentioned it over several episodes. So you can start to bring in your products and services. And here's the thing that I think most podcasts, especially for business podcasts, are forgetting is getting that listener feedback, giving them a way that they can commute with, uh, communicate with them. Whether this, again, be a form where they're giving you uh, a content ideas, whether this is, you know, giving them a community where they can actually chat with you, you know, like, you know, we can all have conversations with Facebook Messenger and Facebook groups. There's things like Circle and Mighty Networks. Like, how can you listen? How can this become a conversation engine that can end up equaling conversions uh, that then is driving revenue to the bottom line of your business. Th those are the two main things I would think about. So I have a question, George, because we've talked about podcasting before, and you know, and you talk about you know basically talked about how it's building your brand, right? You're using the podcast to build your brand. But if I understood you before, there was some aspect of you got to define your brand before you start your podcast. Oh. You need to know how you want to show up for the world, right? And you need to know that the topics that you're passionate about and want to talk about. And as a matter of fact, at some point in the podcast, we may even dive a little bit deeper. I have this kind of pyramid metric, uh, Joe, that I talk about as far as like making this a um, rentable, repeatable, scalable like thing. But I, I do want to answer your question a little bit deeper for me. Uh, and the podcast that I do, I know I'm showing up as a certain type of human being. I'm showing up with a certain type of brand or a slice of the brand. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Carly, at the beginning of this, listed off the, <laughs> geez, I need one more podcast, I think. Um, but she listed off the podcast that I do. When it's the Hub Heroes, I'm coming up and I'm pulling the slice of my brand that is the HubSpot expert, right? It's all about HubSpot, CRM, CMS, marketing, sales, service. But I'm also showing up as I'm part of a brand because there's three to four people, sometimes a guest on that show. And we're talking about the um, strategies and tactics that HubSpot users could use. That's fundamentally what that brand is and how I need to show up. When I show up for Sidekick Strategies, the part of uh, my brand that's showing up is Helper. Okay, I'll get, I'll, I'll tie this all together here, here in a second, is Helper. Meaning I'm helping the guest who is the hero of the Sidekick Strategy show be able to uh, get the information out in a way that the audience is gonna be able to understand and move forward with helpful. If I go into Marketing Smarts, which is a podcast that we do, I know, again, my job is to show up as being helpful, but also be happy. And when I say happy, what I mean is be entertaining. Because when you think of B2B marketing, it might not be the most exciting thing that you've thought about diving into, but we can create a show that's actually going to be a little entertaining, but educational along the way. And then beyond your default, I show up as the human side of me. This is literally a, uh, a passion project 
where I'm unpacking what life has taught me as of a 51-year-old businessman who owns an organization or a company that started out in a one-room log cabin with no running water and is a high school dropout. What lessons did I learn to get here? And so how do I want to show up? How do you want to show up? If you pay attention to any of my content, I literally say at the end of my podcast or at the end of my videos, don't forget to be a happy, helpful, humble human. That is who I'm showing up. These are the slices that I bring. I'm happy, helpful, humble human that helps people with HubSpot. I'm a happy, helpful, humble human that helps humans just in general. Like I'm a happy, helpful, humble human that creates valuable content and puts it into the world on topics that I'm passionate about. So there's the George B. Thomas brand, but then which is authentic, and then that's basically applied to different areas slightly differently in order to be appropriate for the particular exactly. for the particular exactly. content. Well, George, you make podcasting sound very appealing. I know we are podcasting as we speak, but for people who aren't, you um, mentioned the pyramid metric. And then you have this pyramid that you refer to for business podcasting. Can you walk us through that? Yeah, I can. And it's funny because it it was built because I needed a way to visually show all the moving parts of this. Because what can fundamentally happen is you can be like, start a podcast. And then people are like, I don't even, I don't even know what that means. Like, sure, it means go find a tool, go find a mic and start talking. And so um, I'm, I'm sure that I can give you a graphic that can be on the show notes. So as people are listening to this, if you head over to lifestar.com and you go to the episode, we'll have a screenshot that you can look at while we're actually talking through this. Yes. What did I just do? I made you go somewhere on the podcast so you could actually interact with the Lifestar brand. This is a lesson that you might take and run in your podcast after you're done listening to this today. Now. I'll stop waxing so funny. I won't, I won't suggest that you put it up on the screen here for the YouTube viewers. Then. Oh, yeah, yeah. There we go. There we go. I could. I could. But no, go over right now. Open up a new tab and go over to Lifestar and look at the screen. Uh, so here's the thing. There's a lot of moving parts. And so the first place you have to uh, think about, because one of the words that is key to your future success is consistency. Okay, you have to be consistent with the content that you're creating. You're going to want to be able to talk about it for weeks, months, years, forever. And so you have to find out what's the topic of passion. That's number one. When you find out that topic or topics of passion, um, you need to figure out, do they actually tie back to what it is we do that drives revenue for the business? Because there has to be some sort of correlation. Otherwise, we're just podcasting. And we're not doing business podcasting. So the passion topics and what drives revenue for your business have to collide together. Then if we think about the next step of that, we're starting to have that topic. We want to create a buzz. Hey, we've got a show. We're creating a show. We've launched an episode of the show. Here's a clip from the show. The show's on YouTube. The show's on, hey, look, we're growing this way. We're growing that way. We're bringing this person. Anything that you can do to talk about it, you're creating a buzz. Okay. Um, you're creating a buzz, you're creating that valuable education, you're creating those conversations on the internet um, so that you can start the conversations. Again, if I go to start the conversations, this literally means your conversion or your list strategy. We'll, we'll get to that here in a minute. But it's starting conversations with humans because I don't want you to get stuck on the marketing side. I don't want you to think this is let me start a podcast around a topic I'm passionate about, create a buzz so that I can convert them to a customer. You are skipping a whole big part of the journey, if that's the way you think about it. But it's starting the conversations. The conversation might start in your inbox because you said something that just moves somebody. Conversation might start by them subscribing to your podcast. Conversation might start by them suggesting an episode so they can see how you would unpack your brain on a certain thing. But as you start these conversations, what you're doing is you're building your tribe. You're building that community. People who um, like the way that you talk, like the way that you think, uh, like the way that you entertain or educate are going to start to uh, circle around you. And you'll end up building a community with actually not even thinking that you're building a community. That's a real piece there that people need. Your goal in your strategy isn't to go build a community. 
It's to create helpful content for humans and have conversations. And then poof, it becomes a community. Now, we can talk about in a minute of giving them a place to go and to live and all that good stuff in the future. But if we do this topic of passion, create a buzz, start a conversation, build your tribe. At the end of the day, we end up with a very, very powerful brand. So how do we take those steps that I just said and think about them in the marketing and sales perspective? Simple. Topic of passion means educate, execute, educate, execute. What I mean is you educate yourself on something, you execute it, and you turn around and educate others how to execute it. That, by the way, is a it just fundamentally in life is how you become a master at your craft. Educate, execute, and then educate others how to execute it. After that, the create a buzz, we're creating valuable edu- educational content. I almost went into my word. I like to say edutainment. I want to entertain <laughs> you and I want to educate you. But you can create valuable educational content because I don't want you to feel like it has to have an entertaining a level because that's very like what is entertaining to you is maybe not entertaining to me, but just be your authentic self and it'll be entertaining and educational to the tribe that wants to be around you. We say that starting con- uh, conversations, that's your conversion. That's your list strategy. I've already mentioned it a couple of times. Subscribe to the uh, podcast. What are your show ideas? It's a form. Uh, come join the community. Uh, it's a place where they can convert. We can understand how they are and, and we can drive these deeper conversations. And then building that tribe, all of this content, it's because I want them to be in the earbuds. I want to be in their earbuds. I want them to take me on a plane. I want them to take me on a train. I want them to take me on a hike up a mountain. Shoot. I even had a lady that emailed Marcus Sheridan and me and said that she was listening to us in the shower one day. Kind of freaked us out, but hey, it's good to know that people are listening to your <laughs> podcast. I want them to have the ability to take me wherever they're going to go. You, as a solopreneur, want to enable the people that could potentially buy your products and services to take you wherever they can go. So do I preach about starting with video? Yes. But do I make it a mandatory thing to have an audio podcast that people can easily get to and take anywhere? Absolutely. But the moral of the story is over time, they like you. They know you. They trust you. You have uh, taken the balance, uh, you know, the two scales, and and one has hit the ground filled with reciprocity. And so why would they work with anybody else? You're their long-lost friend that they've spent 272 episodes learning and and, um, massively changing the way that they do business or live their life or whatever your product or service is. Why would they go anywhere else? And the very tippy top of this pyramid, the last thing, because it shouldn't be your focus, but it is the outcome. Cha-ching. You start to get paid. That was a awesome. great ending. I know. I was like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like the roller coaster ride. And we just went over the hill. Woo! <laughs> I didn't know if you were going to say something after that. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, what, what's next? And it was like, oh, that was the best way to end that. Um, so that was amazing. Um, I It's funny because I feel like the the tee up with the brand and and then just this pyramid, uh, you would think that that would set people up for success, for success excuse me. Um, but even with all of that, it can still be intimidating. Like, if you have a roadmap, it's still like, oh, my gosh, I'm putting myself out there. Actually, I was listening to one of your recent episodes of Beyond Your Default. And you said that you didn't think you had a voice for podcasting, which is hilarious to me because you have one of my favorite voices ever. Um, But you were saying that that was an intimidating thing for you because you didn't think you had a voice for a podcast. Um, So you obviously got started. Now you have four podcasts. For people who are excited about this, how do they just get out of their own way and just do it? Yeah, that might be the most difficult part. And and what's fun is you can manufacture probably what I'm about to say. And then I'm also going to just kind of bring up some questions that I want you to ask yourself. Um, I probably would have never started a podcast. Uh, I, in my own head, believe it or not, my voice sounds squeaky. And, and my voice inside my head kind of annoys me. Not so much anymore, but back in the day. Um, and Marcus Sheridan was like, we're going to start a podcast. I'm like, huh? Uh, I'm like, dude, you, 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 no, I hate my voice. No way. 
and he forced it. Like, if your boss tells you you're going to start a podcast, you start a podcast, by the way. And so we started podcasting, and we got about six months into it. And then we went to Inbound, which is HubSpot's big uh, conference. And I kid you not, Carly and Joe, I kept hearing, like, dude, we love your podcast. You sound like a radio announcer. I'm like, what? Oh, man, yeah, it's buttery smooth. I could listen to you all day long. I'm like, eh. And so here's the thing. What I thought was my bigness, biggest weakness ended up being my largest strength over time. Because once I embraced the fact that people actually like to hear my voice, then we went from podcasting to video tutorials, create like events, speaking on stage. Like it was the unlock. Um, and I, I would challenge people to to look at the thing that is holding you back and spend more time on figuring how to unlock that than anything else that you might be trying to do because you don't understand the dominoes that will fall once you make that decision. Now, you have to ask yourself, why do you feel this way? Why is there a level of fear? Why is it intimidating? I don't think it'll be all of these reasons, but I think it might be one or several of these reasons. So for instance, um, man, I just got a fear of public speaking. Yo, do you podcast in your closet then? There ain't nobody there but you, a computer, and your mic. Like, it's not like you're literally stepping out on stage. Also on that one, please, please realize the power of post-production. You can mess up 72 times and chop that junk out and make it sound like you are the smartest, dopest communicator on the planet. So, like, just let your brain out. And don't be afraid of what you're going to say or how you're going to say it because it can be edited before it goes live and you're not in public. If it's your perceived lack of experience, well, who am I? Why would they want to listen to me? Ladies and gentlemen, you are one step above millions of people on the thing that you do on a daily basis. You are having imposter syndrome or you're having the curse of knowledge, meaning you've been doing it so long you forgot that it's freaking special. And so you have to force yourself out of this thought of who am I and just simply teach at the level that you can teach, understanding again, there are thousands if not millions of people that are one, two, or 17 steps below the words that are going to come out of your mouth. Also, I want to just kind of pivot for a second, and I hope everybody's realizing this This all ties back to the fact that you fundamentally care about the humans that you're going to impact with the thing that you're doing. Like, it's it's you're doing this with a purpose. You're doing this with a passion. So, like, the public speaking, the lack of expertise should be like, Whoop! screw it, let's go, time to rock and roll. You might actually be sitting here going, well, George, I'm not the most technically savvy person on the planet. Sweet. Hire somebody to help you. Watch a YouTube video. Take a course. Whatever you got to do. Have your nephew come over and set it up for you. Or your He's twelve, right? Yeah. Set up your <laughs> grandchild. I have a 12-year-old. Yes. I have a 12-year-old. <laughs> come set it up for you. And have them show you how to just to press the record button and the upload button. Uh, what I'm saying here, figure out ways to simplify the complex. And if technology is complex, then figure out a way to make it real easy for you to rinse and repeat your content. Um, it might, by the way, because I mentioned content, be the creation process. Well, uh, I create the podcast and then I have to create clips and then I have to have show notes and then I have to have an email that goes out and then I have to, have, and you have to yourself out of even recording the first episode. Just take it easy. Take a chill pill. Do what you can when you can do it and add the layers in as you go. It doesn't have to be a 100% perfect revenue driving engine, community building engine brand building system from the get-go listen one oh hey okay podcast is going to be more power than no podcasts 10 okay podcasts is going to be way better than no podcasts or no videos or no whatever so if it is the content creation process realize 
there's a method to your madness. You just need to think about how can you ideate ideas to talk about and how can you organize the steps that you need to take from it being an idea to being live and people being able to get back to it. Simplify the complex. Last but not least, if it's, man, this is a big commitment. Darn straight. But anytime you step out of being a, what I'll call default human and decide that you want to go beyond your default and you want to put a dent in the universe and you want to serve a community. If you want to serve a community, hey, you in the back row, if you want to serve a community, it's all about being committed. It's all about being consistent. So thinking about I'm going to do this podcast because it's the easiest way for me to serve the humans to get past the hurdles or to reach the aspirations that they're trying to achieve. And I know if I do that, I reap what I sow. And so I'm going to reap, cha-ching, get paid. And the roller coaster. Woo! Woo! <laughs> Well, and I so, just- George, can I just dig in on one? Yeah. One of yeah. the interesting ones to me that you mentioned is the idea of not knowing what you know, what you said basically of, of like you don't even realize how much you've learned. And I kind of had that experience when we started podcasting. And, and it, was, it was interesting. What I ended up doing was I created something called the Solopreneur Success Cycle. And I kind of put together a flywheel of a solopreneur business and and I went through it, and I, I ended up creating a page on the website. You know, you, you actually, you helped us with it, I think. Yep. And it ended up being 25,000 words. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, so literally could be like a book. And it's like, and I had no idea until I sat down and wrote something that you know, to help people. And it made such a difference, because now I always feel like I have a place to draw from. Yes, so I love a couple of things about that. One, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't go over to Lifestar to actually look at the pyramid, you should go over to Lifestar and look at the solopreneur success cycle and what Joe's talking about. But also you uh, make a valid point of, I have something that I can point back to. Every episode that you create is something that you can point back to in the sales process, in the marketing process, in the service process. Your content is the engine for everything that you're trying to do. Just know that there's that layer of it that we're probably not even really talking about today. But Joe, it's funny because to hear you tell that story, I said something last week to somebody. Um, I said this, I said, man, I love when you ask me questions on the show because I get to learn how I think about them. Like there is so much in our brains and and we just don't know what it is until we give it a place and output it. And your podcast is one of the easiest place to put the output of your brain into the world. Like, you know how many things I've taught myself just because I've been asked a question, answer that question on a podcast and then be like, hey, dang, maybe I should follow my own advice. Yeah. Absolutely. And the other thing I'll throw in there is I have never met nor listened to a podcaster say they love their first episode, say that they were like, mm. it was the best. I'm so good at this right out the gate. Every single person I've talked to or heard, I even think I think John Lee Dumas said it, said it on our recent podcast. He's a big podcaster. And he's like listening back to my older stuff. Like everybody starts from the beginning. Nobody goes oh, and yeah. be like, I'm the best at this. <laughs> Yo, it's it's cringy. Like one of the things that uh, I wish I had was like my first video tutorial or the first podcast episode that I ever did. But but what I want everybody to realize it, it, from what we're talking about is there is going to be a messy middle. There's going to be where you're just figuring out. But like if you just keep pushing forward, if you just keep hitting record, if you just keep publishing, there becomes a time where you're like, mm, this is... This is so easy, right? I mean, before we even hit the record of this show, I came on, you saw I was super happy. And I was like, yeah, I looked at my calendar and I get to create seven pieces of content today. To most mere mortals, that day. would be like, what? What are you doing today? And me, I'm like, I'm energized because it's just become so easy over time 
to hop on the mic, get in front of the camera, add value, hit record, publish, and understand at the end of the day, like I am impacting my little space, my universe, and the humans that will be able to see that. Can I make a point though, George? And I think it's important. You, I mean, maybe you didn't out of the gate, but you have you you have a gift, you know. And I can do this for ten more years, and I won't be where you are because you just you're built for it, and that's great. But there are some podcasters out there, and some that I listen to regularly, that aren't really very good at. You know, I'm probably one of them that aren't really very good at, no, no, at no, kind no, of no. presenting See? on a podcast. They, their their voice isn't you know animated, and they're kind of you know they screw things up and they forget their train of thought. But they're presenting material that are, is of interest, and they're getting the right guests if they have guests. And people forgive that if you're giving them something that helps them. Yes. Or something that interests them. So I just yes. think it's important to know that, you know, not everybody's going to become George B. Thomas, but no. and, you know, even some of the biggest podcasters going, I don't know if you, I've mentioned them before, uh, Lex Friedman, really big in kind of the science world and a huge podcast. And I mean, I, I like the guy, he's very likable, but when you listen to him, he's not really that, you know, he, he's not that great on, in terms of like his voice and and his pronunciation and all this stuff. He's kind of, you know, but he's vulnerable and and um, and honest and and that's all it takes. That's you all know. people want. You don't have to be a, a GBT, right? You don't you don't have to be hyper dynamic. You don't have to have focused on like great communication and like red books and you don't have to watch your game tapes. I do. Like I'll listen to a podcast, watch a video. Where did I mess up? How can I get better? Like you don't have to do any of that. Joe, what I love about what you said, and then by the way, I'm going to pivot and tell you what I don't love about what you said too. But what I love about what you said is like, just be your authentic self and bring to the plate the conversations that people need to hear and they will love it. Listen, I don't need some shenanigan, ed, you know, entertaining uh, dude if I'm trying to listen to a podcast on neuroscience. I need I need a neuroscientist, which I know is going to maybe be a little dry potentially, but I want to learn that information, right? If I'm listening to a manufacturing podcast, you know, it might not be the sexiest podcast ever, but I'm going to learn what I need to learn about manufacturing. So you got to take that as you as the solopreneur, what voice, what tone, who are you? How do you want to show up? Boom, show up and just do that for your podcast. Now, Joe did something on this podcast. And the only reason I'm going to bring this up is because how much I like Joe and how much I know Joe. If you're sitting here, and you negative talk yourself. Well, I might might be this type of guy, or I might not be that type of guy. Or if you start to make excuses for who you are, ladies and gentlemen, nobody cares about your nose, your face, your ears, your hair, your weight, how you sound. They don't care. They simply care about the words coming out your mouth. That's it. So be your best advocate and be like, I know, out of all of the God has given me, I can come up with some dope words. Let's hit record. Woo! Well, I, 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 and I didn't mean to say that I wasn't providing value. I, I know just you said did, that but I couldn't I might, let it go. I, uh, no, it's a good point. And it's, you know, it's one of those things where I honestly, one of the things I hated the most was going to video. I didn't mind doing mm. audio, but going to video was like, no, I don't want to do it. And, Everybody was telling us we had to do it. I think you were one of them. Yeah, um, super and, powerful. Uh, it was. It, it was like, nah, I don't want to do video. It's you know, like I want to be able to wear my Lifestar T-shirt, but I did. So <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, so I think we can all agree that we're all in this together. We all make mistakes. We all start at the beginning and improve as we go. Um, and those mistakes you can learn from them. But when it comes to business podcasting, there are mistakes that you can make that actually are detrimental. And it doesn't have to do with the recording itself. Um, George, can you touch on a few of those mistakes that you see a lot of people make and how they might be able to avoid that? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because as I was thinking about this question, I've started to realize how they kind of pair together a little bit. And what I mean is, um, first of all, I really love the question, but 
we as humans get in our head so much. So if you think about business podcasting, the first thing they're going to be like, if they're good marketers or business owners, oh, we got to measure this. We immediately got to know if it's successful. If we don't have 12,000 downloads in the first 15 minutes, well, work podcasting isn't for us. And so they worry about the numbers too soon. And you can tie that back to the fact that, listen, you got the messy middle. You got the ugly beginning. How about you get past those points before you really start to focus about the numbers and what it's driving and where it's going? There's, you know, when we're born, we have to become, uh, you know, teenagers before we become adults. We have to crawl before we can walk, before we can run. Your podcast is going to be the same way. So give those numbers, the time to grow that they need instead of being so focused on them immediately. But the second thing that I'll say right on this, this is what I mean by pairing, is they don't worry about the numbers at all. Like they're like, wee, this is fun. Let's just hit record. Who cares? Oh, for the last seven months, only one person has been listening to it. Well, what do you mean we should have been promoted on social? What do you mean we should have been doing clips? What do you mean we should have been emailing our historical database? Like they're missing all the tactics and strategies to make sure that the numbers are actually doing what they should do, that the content is doing what it should do. So don't do it too soon, but make sure you are focusing on the numbers at some point. And I want to reiterate, this is for business podcasting. Like if yes. you are doing a passion podcast, like beyond your default, like you do, okay, who cares about the numbers? That's your passion yep. project. But yep. reiterating, this is for business podcasting. Yep. I literally do not look at the numbers of that podcast. I don't care. That I could, If I could turn off the analytics in Transistor FM for that podcast, I would. Don't care. I'm going to do that no matter what. Hub Heroes, let's just say, ladies and gentlemen, I look at the metrics. Um, now, here's the thing. They don't stay consistent. There's some sort of stat. It's like seven. Maybe now it's 10. Most podcasts don't make it past uh, episode seven or episode 10. Um, and let's even make it worse. Most podcasts, if they started out as weekly or biweekly, by the third or fourth episode have become monthly or bi-monthly. Like, no, no, it's got to be consistent. You, This is huge. Ladies and gentlemen, if I could tell you anything that I would hope that you would take away from this is once you start, be consistent because it's one brick at a time. It's 1% each and every day. Like that's what grows your podcast and the revenue and the conversations and everything that we're talking about. It's it's a little hit at a time, little hit at a time. Like you're chopping down a tree. Got to be consistent. Um, the other thing, though, is if you're going to be that consistent and you are going to focus on the numbers, by all that is holy, please have a home base to send them to. Don't think that just putting your podcast on the podcast app and then, you know, sending it out to Spotify and Amazon and all those places is enough. Oh, well, we put show notes in Transistor or Lips and we're good. No, 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 no. They, there should be a page that they could come back to on your website where there's additional resources, the show notes, maybe the players there, maybe the video versions there. Maybe it's links to other things that you've talked about. Like there should be a place, a home base, because at that home base, by the way, there should be a call to action at the bottom of your podcast being like, and if you need help with this, we ching, we're here. This is what we do. This is kind of why we created the conversations and the content so that you could maybe get to this point when it's right for you. I'm waxing a little funny, but literally you should have a call to action to a product or service that you do on this page because you're bringing them back to home base. Like the amount of people I've seen podcast and not have a place to send them to, crazy. Um, speaking of that, I was just talking about call to actions, which leads into selling. It's okay to sell, but way too many people are selling way too soon. Episode one, we've got these 17 workshops that you can get. Now we're going to talk about imposter syndrome. Like, nah, blah. like, no, please build the value first. Like with the Hubcast, we waited till the 52nd episode to bring up the fact that we had a HubSpot intensive workshop that you could take. 52 episodes. By the way, when we did start to talk about the workshops, it ended up being six figures in business one year just off of those workshops. And that was the only place we were talking about them. So you can drive revenue with business podcasting. You can sell, but don't sell too soon. Or here's the other one. 
which you'll never hear me sell, by the way, on Beyond Your Default. Again, passion project, but business podcasting. If you're doing a business podcast and you've been doing it for three months, six months, nine months, consistently adding value, and you haven't mentioned what you do or a product or service that is around what you do, uh, do that over the next 10 episodes and then call me and tell me what happened. Love it, love it, love it. George- What's your phone number? <laughs> well, here's, here's the thing. You don't need my phone number. You can directly chat with me by going to community.hubheroes.com because we have the technology. All uh, right. As we like, 555. Five, five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 4141411. <laughs> or actually, I think it's uh, 8657309 maybe might yeah. be the- 8675309. Yeah. Yep. yep. No and error. Got Jenny's number. That song is going in the show notes. What, what was what was the name of that that band? What was that the band? Oh, oh see now I'm stumped. There if we only go. Only we were all like computers and we could look it up. Right. Okay. The first person that 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 emails joeatlifestyle.com with the name of the band gets a free T-shirt. Oh, I like it. I like it. I like that. First email. And joeatlifestyle.com with two R's. Love yeah. it. Well, like George. This. Yes. Oh, there it is. If yeah. you're, if you're, if you're watching you on YouTube. This, if you're listening to this, Joe is pointing at his chest it and is. he's pointing at a shirt that says L I F E S T A R R. So, two R's, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Video. The power of video. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, George, I think this episode will help people be successful in their podcasting endeavors if they are wanting to take that route, which after this, they should. Um, but last time we were on this show, we asked you what your favorite quote about success was. And I feel like success changes for people over time. So I want to ask this for, to you again. What is your favorite quote about success? Yeah. So it's funny because... A, it meant my mind has completely changed around success. And I would even say now more than ever, I default on significance over success, which is why I love this quote by Kathy Calvin. And, and Kathy Calvin, just so everybody knows, is a prominent figure, um, president and chief executive officer of the United Nations Foundation, um, focused on connecting people, ideas, resources. Hey, does that sound familiar? Anyway, connecting people, ideas, resources to help. I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe this entire podcast was about those three things. Um, but the quote that success is not just about making money, cha-ching, it's about making a difference. And like when I'm about to hit the record button, that's literally my focus is, okay, God, how can I make a difference in the world how can I make a difference in the one person that might listen to this or watch this? How can I make a difference in the 10,000 people that might listen or watch this? By the way, you Great. focus on that, success shows up. I feel like we should quote that too. <laughs> focus on difference, success will show up, George yep, B. Yep. Thomas. <laughs> there we go. It's going in the show notes. You heard it here. Well, George, you know we love hanging out with you. I think our audience feels the same way. Uh, we've mentioned a few of the podcasts on the show, and I have to say, uh, we've been talking about business podcasting. For So for George, he has Hub Heroes Podcast, Psychic Strategies, and Marketing Smarts um, for his business podcast. But I have been listening to George's Beyond Your Default, which is his personal podcast. And I know he's not going to promote it as much. It's his personal passion but man, do I love it. And George, I told you I was going to send you a little recap of what I actually thought. So I'm going to give you a little snippet here. But if uh -oh. you want to get to know George B. Thomas and you already like the guy, you are just going to like him even more. It is such a good show. I have learned so much about you through it. And I feel like I'm closer to you through it, even though I get to talk to you on a weekly basis. Um, it's awesome. So definitely follow his business podcast. But I am very impressed I'll check and it out. very excited for you for this new passion of yours so we will link to all those in the show notes but george where else can people find you yeah um first of all carly thanks for that because um i'm really trying to step out uh let me tell a little story then i'll i'll, I'll show how people can connect i was once doing a business webinar and somebody was stating something about talking about personal life versus professional life and I said in a chat pane, this is why I only do HubSpot tutorials. Nobody cares what I think. They care what I know. 
And multiple people in the chat pane said, we care what you think. And it took me years to get to the point where I was comfortable to share some of the things that I'm sharing on this passion project and get to the point where I felt like it was time to activate mentor mode. Podcasting got me to that point, though. Got me comfortable. Um, the making a difference, reaching the success got me to the point where I was willing to do like this passion project that thank you again for mentioning and if people want to listen. So let's go to the connection part. If people want to learn uh, more about me, it really depends. It's That's a great marketing answer, by the way. It depends. Like if they want to find out more about the business, then head over to georgebthomas.com. You'll see the who, the why, all of that stuff. If you want to learn more about me as a human of like, mm, this guy, like, First meeting on this podcast, never heard of you before, head over to georgebthomas.com forward slash about. That'll give you a nice little like dip your toes in the water of who I am. Or like Carly said, you could go to beyondyourdefault.com, listen to that podcast, and you'll learn all sorts of fun stuff about me. If you want to actually engage with me, like meaning you're not in research mode, uh, and you want to talk or conversate, then I would send you again over to community.hubheroes.com. It's our little nerdy area of the internet. We've got live chat. We've got resources. Uh, there's other community members, so you won't just be talking to me. There's other folks that you can talk to as well. But over there, we love to talk shop about things like video marketing, podcasting, HubSpot, sales, marketing, service, revenue operate. Like there's just a lot of nerdy topics that we like to talk about. And so if you want to engage, uh, then head over there. But those are the best places. Notice, by the way, <laughs> I didn't reference one social media platform. But you'll find me there, too. <laughs> well, I think there's only one way to wrap up this show, and that's woo! Woo! <laughs> what a ride! Oh, woo! George, this has been so fun. Thank you so, so much for coming on. Joe, I don't know if you want to say anything. I don't want to cut you off if you do. No, just thanks, George. I mean, talking about helping people and you helped us help people today and we really appreciate it. Love it. I appreciate yeah. the That's opportunity. That's what we're about too. I, yes, yep. I, yes. I appreciate the opportunity. Come back again. And listeners, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe to this podcast or watch us on YouTube and we will see you next time.